Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Public Nuisance Podcast. I'm here with Bomba Faya. What's up? How are you doing? Chino, yeah. know, you know. Uh, they just coming off the stage. I got Colin, Benicia, Stefan, Evan, and Philly. Guys, hey. What's up? Bit. What's up? Do a little inter- uh, personal introduction. Go ahead. Start with you, Colin. Yeah, what's up? I'm Colin. I'm the singer, guitarist in the band, uh, one of the main writers as well. And uh, yeah, man, I just basically got into playing reggae rock music. I was into... Uh, listening to classic rock when I grew up and hip hop, and then I think when I, I'm from New York too, by the way, originally from New York, uh, Long Island, so still by the water, about two hours from the city. But uh, I heard some. I was I started getting into reggae, of course, like Bob Marley, one of the vocal ones of when I first started getting into it. But then it's like it just progressed when I first heard Revolution and I heard uh, Slightly Stupid and bands like that. I just that caught my ear and. Out in New York, everybody was like heavy into listening to rap and hip hop mainly, and I like that shit too, like the game. And we listened to like Lil Wayne and all that shit mm-hmm. when I was growing up and everything, you know, from Big L, a yeah, lot of hip hop, a lot L. of hip hop. Uh, but uh, I don't know, I just something about that that Cali reggae music like it got to me, you know. And I was like, I think I want to try to try to do something like that. And actually, tonight we got to open for Tomorrow's Bad Seeds, and in in 2012, I decided to just get in my car with a buddy and come across the country to California. That was the plan. We didn't know where we were going to live, what we were going to do. Just my sister was living in Santa Barbara because she was going to uh, SBCC and she was living out in Isla Vista. But I was just like, okay, we had a destination. Maybe we'll go to Santa Barbara first. And I thought I'd been to California once before and visited San Diego and thought like, fuck, man, San Diego's the shit. So I thought I was going to move to San Diego. But basically we just drove out here and we got to Santa Barbara and we were like, this is nice. We're like, I think we can stay here. So we just figured it out, man. We ended up getting a uh, a trailer in a mobile park off of Canada Lar- Canada Street down there, which is like uh, to it's Kasiki and like Milpis Avenue around there. And uh, yeah, I, I, I uh, just would go out and party in Isla Vista, but then I would work in Santa Barbara. I got a job polishing airstreams, and uh, it was random. I just showed up to a bunch of trailers. <laughs> and they were like, here's a buffer and have at it. And that's what ended up bringing me to Ventura because I worked there for two years. I actually met Benicia there. Uh, she was renting out. They had a back room. This is a long story. Sorry. It goes like, into I'm mine, like, so it's okay. Like, like uh, it's the whole story how I kind of got here, you know, and how this band started. Um, and basically, I was working, and then there was a back our bathroom and then a back room in the main office, and it was separated at the time. And uh, they rented this back room to her to, for her um, to do art. She was doing art at Westmont and mm-hmm. finishing her class project. And a couple of guys I was working with, one of my friends was like, you see the hot girl like in the back there renting out that room? I'm like, what girl? You know, let me check that out. You know, what's up? And go say, what up? So I went to go like, I'm all covered in polish and, and all that from buffing. I'm dirty. And I went to the bathroom. They like, washed my face. I'm like, oh, yeah, just like spark up a conversation. And then like ended up getting her Instagram or whatever and like following her from there. And then. It happened to be two years later. I was still following her on Instagram, and I reached out and was like, "Hey, you want to come out and hang out sometime? Whatever." I tried to hang out with her before, but she wasn't. She wasn't feeling me. I guess that was too much or something. I tried to holler at her earlier, but she wasn't trying to have that. So I had to. It was like just kept. I was like, "Man, she's still on my feed. I'm gonna hit her up." So I actually it was before DMs on Instagram. So I like found her on Facebook. A little bit of stalking there, and uh, messaged her on Facebook, and then she came out. I had a rock band at the time. And uh, she came out and saw me play there. And then we just hit it off from that moment on. We've been together ever since. And I ended up continuing to do trailer polishing, starting my own business. And then I found a yard off of Olive Street down here in Ventura. And we both kind of went in on it together because I needed a little help to get what the funds I needed. And she helped me out to get the what I needed to get in there. So we have a wor- I have a work yard since 2015 here in Ventura. Nice. So that brought me down to Ventura, doing my trailer business hit down there. And then I just started going out and uh, being in the community and meeting some of the musicians. Like one of the bands that was popular back then was Herbal Roots. And I got to play with them and meet a lot of people that are jamming now in the community. And we used some of the members from that band. And then we slowly started forming our band up and then um, released one album, had to reset, do things all over again because the original group that we had didn't work out between everybody that we had, unfortunately. And then, from that point on just started building and that's when we started finding the rest of these guys and philly i was producing my record with philly and i was like nervous to even ask him i eventually asked him to play keyboard for us he's like should have asked me a long time ago i, and I was know. like i didn't think he was saying yes but i don't i don't OG, know we were like OG. 
we were just kind of building back up, and then uh, just last year we were introduced to Stefanos too, about a year and a half ago or so, and then yeah. Evan as well, and then we've been together. This this core has been working together since about I want to say like probably about a full year. We probably got together mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. right around this time last year, yep. and uh, we've been working at it. And, uh, but yeah, super really grateful soon. for these guys, and it's a good it's a good family uh, here. And uh, that's kind of the story about how it all, how we, how I end up in Ventura, how I'm here, how I started this shit, and I, I got I'm inspired by a lot of different music, man, and a lot of classic rock and and Santana and like a lot of get a lot of my inspiration from like uh, Deep Purple, old bands like that, and then also some of the other stuff like Green Day. Um, I like uh, Deep Purple. Mm. Deep Purple's legit. But then also listen. I did listen to some some punk rock too, like No Effects and and. Uh, <laughs> no, but it, it's funny that you said you know because you came from New York and here I did just the opposite you know I was I grew up here and I got a football scholarship back in Maryland and oh, then yeah. there and I didn't have the same experience so you showed up here it was nice I showed up there it was hot muggy yeah, yeah, football. Yeah, like, yeah. what the <laughs> fuck did I just do to my life you know <laughs> but no I ended up staying back there for 30 years and come yeah. back here but yeah so that's why I got out of there that's yeah. why because I was like I need to I need good weather all the time not just three months out of the year you know all right, well, so. but, uh, Benicia, so tell us about yourself. Yeah, so Colin did a really good introduction <laughs> there. Um, I, I saw him um, playing rock music, and I was just like, really about it. Um, growing up, I uh, was really influenced. Probably my first CDs were like pop, but um, watching MTV music videos really inspired me. I feel like I'm really inspired by the performance art, the presentation, um, music videos, just that kind of thing I grew up watching a lot of and just always thought, wow, that would be so cool to put a whole production together and think about the outfits. And man, they really put time into all that. So I think for me, um, I started Bombafia mostly. My imprint on it was the logo, the branding, a lot of the um, presentation and the package and things like that. That's always what I've been really into so i do a lot of art so visual arts there's a good amount like the logo original logo i i did the design on that and just inspired by art in general so yeah well i mean um, just i mean look you got it like yeah, your whole, your whole yeah. look is all dope. art teacher I mean, as well. dope, dope, I mean, I, those are the dopest pants i've ever seen anybody <laughs> wearing here you know you, you gotta stand up you gotta, you gotta stand up oh, okay. see, yeah. gotta say, we gotta model the look here okay here we yeah. go and then the black light those things they, like, they they so dope. The pants. <laughs> i saved them for this were, but yeah did yeah. you crochet them yeah. yourself Grandma <laughs> squares no i had a friend do it i told her the vision so that's definitely something that i'm into is like Wanting you got to the look, attract, you got the hair, you got you know? the blade, it's all, it's yes, all tied in. It's, it's the part of the, the package, I feel. It's she has all the style look. that I don't, so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely my favorite part is making sure everybody's swag on point, that hashtag I'm, I'm a sound style, guy, though, so I always you know? wear black. <laughs> yeah, no, right? You, somebody's got to hold down that, that black oh, fortress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but it's been fun working with these guys and just, um, like, the new album that we're working on right now, we're... Um, releasing singles and we're putting together this whole full length album and I really feel like it's highlighting um, just a lot of raw talent and a lot of um, just passion the songs I feel are very catchy and um, they're deep, they're relatable so I'm really excited to see just um, the reaction after we release right now we're just kind of collecting this yeah. uh, collection well, when you get to that point you're going to release I'd love you guys have to do a release party here yes that would be so fun oh, yeah. 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 we would love to yeah. awesome. most definitely what about the, 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 you over there Stefan wow. what about you all right, yeah, I'm Stefano Stefan, St- I go with Stephanosis is an artist handle I use um, and Steph. basically I, I got to I got to give credit where credit's due, you know, I, I so my story is I, I came out here a couple years ago, I'm, I'm um, an L.A. transplant, you know, like, and, um, and Stephon, I came. Stephon did this for the ladies, I can tell, he's smooth, look at him, he did it for the ladies, oh, he's a nice old boy, he's like, yeah, you know? <laughs> but, but no, I, I um, so I, I came out here a couple years ago after the whole pandemic, pandemic thing, and yeah, and I, ju- I just love it here, man. I, I love your space. Thank I you. I love um, everything about 805, the history of of uh, Nardcore. 
Yeah. You know, I, I started playing bass to a, a Nardcore compilation when I was 16. God. Uh, that was my first bass playing, you know, playing punk rock. And then um, I, I discovered The Clash in my my uh, late teens. And and from there, I, I discovered, uh, you know, I heard Mikey Dread stuff, got into reggae. Um, and reggae as, as a bassist just hooked me. It was instant. It was like like uh, the bass lines that, that, that was sold, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I, I never really got out and gig much. Um, but af after the whole pandemic phase, it kind of, it was like a kick in the ass. You yeah. know, it made me want to get out and meet musicians. Uh, so I met uh, Nick Justiano, which was a, a former bass player of, of Bumba Fire. And I, I, I sat in on a percussion yeah, with them, yeah, I and, and I just love yeah, them. I, I love yeah. the fact that they're a couple making original music. Mm -hmm and the way they they sing together you know it's like it, it was magic yeah. and then um i was in the right place at the right time you know nick um Bas uh, bastard cast productions <laughs> um you know big ups to him because he he said hey man um bomba fire needs a bass player <laughs> oh, yeah 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 and, and i was in the right place at the right time i loved what they did and i i love what we're doing yeah, you know, it was, you know, it was amazing to me is, you know, because I was in Maryland for 30 years and, you know, I've been back here and, you know, once I started doing the music to, to realize how much talent there is in the 805. Yes. There I is. mean, there, I mean, from all types of, you know, from the reggae scene to the punk scene, you know, there is so much talent here. It's, just, it's insane. You yeah, know, it's just, uh, and, you know, because we have bands coming here every weekend and some of these people just blow me away. You know, it's just like you have no idea that there's so much talent in 805. It's, you know, and you guys are right in there in that fold, man. It's just awesome. Awesome, man. So what's up with you, Evan? Uh, well, I have probably a lot less to say, <laughs> but um, basically I've been playing drums since I was a kid. Um, I really never was, when I was younger, into reggae, um, but once I kind of found these guys, that was my kind of introduction. I've heard, you know, I heard reggae before, but this was like my playing introduction, kind of thinking of how how um, stylistically to play like that. Um, I was more into, I'm from Oklahoma, and so my whole family's over there. And so they're all into country music, bluegrass. <laughs> um, they would they sit around a campfire, play bluegrass for four hours. Um, that's fun. So yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what I've always done. But bluegrass never had drums. So I kind of knew a little guitar, wanted to play drums, but there's no place for drums. And so then, started blues was where i kind of found my introduction to like drums drums yeah. and um and um yeah from there i just started uh, wanting to play different styles wanting to better my playing um and i just loved it and it was kind of gave me a feeling that nothing else could um and i realized that pretty early on yeah. so i wanted to keep going well, and then yeah these guys i craigslist <laughs> Craigslist, I think. I think yeah, yeah, I had a thing on Craigslist. That Looking was for a drummer. Like <laughs> oh, wait, that, that, you had a thing on Craigslist? No, yeah, we had a thing on Craigslist, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought I had a thing on Craigslist. That well, happened, well, that happened so one lot. of us had a thing on Craigslist. You replied to my, my thing, yeah. Okay, there you go. Well, well, that's how we've definitely manifested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Craigslist. Well, be, but yeah. Be, before we, uh, you know, uh, Philly, before you say anything, man, you know, you know, Philly, you've been in here doing a lot of stuff, man. I, I just want to to thank you man because you do so much dude for the music community yeah, you yeah. Know, you've done so much for me and you've <laughs> done you, so man. much for, for in general for a thank lot of you. people dude and you know i don't think you could get enough public recognition for that so i just wanted to say thank oh, you man because dude you, yeah. you do so much for everybody and i, I wish you're philly this philly that you know what i mean and it's always positive it's always good dude yeah. so man uh, i appreciate that I, this is what i love to do you know <laughs> music yeah. my my facebook profile says i make records it's something about making music that that just gets me all the time you know i don't i knew it since a kid and i always talk about it with my friends and like one of the things that i knew when i was a little kid is is music even though nobody there's you know in my family i think me and my brother are the, the first generation to break out into music in my whole family from generations and generations it's probably just work uh, a family of workers and uh me and my brother um we just got into music and 
you know, we played together as a band, and, you know, I was always into hip-hop since a little kid. I've been collecting records since I was probably a fourth grader, fifth grader, and and I uh, got my first pair of turntables at, you know, my eighth, my eighth grade to my freshman year. That summer, I remember getting my turntables, and that was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah, but man, you yeah. make a lot of people smile, man. You've done a lot for people, man, and, you know... It, everybody knows who Philly is around here, you know. I try my best. You know, I, I'm very grateful that that I get to do this, you know. Yeah. Like at, at this point in my life, I made it a career. Um, yeah. You know, my family, you know, was had my back. My friends had my back, and you know, I went to school for this stuff. But I also, you know, kind of created a business out of it. I have a recording studio. I do production, you know. And, and every time and you come in here, you know, it's like oh, doing sound, doing this, do sound, yeah, doing this, and that, you know, he does it, like everything it around the music, man. You, you got yeah, it. So, so I've been blessed, you know. It pays the bills, you know. I have my own, my, my own little place, and you know, I get to do the the, the stuff that I love to do. And uh, That's cool. sometimes I even go like, wow, I can't believe I'm, you know, I'm, you know, this is my job. Right, because I'm sitting there like you know enjoying what I'm doing, you know. That, that's a that's a you know that's oh, yeah. a dream for a lot of people. That's a dream of a lot of people, man. Yeah, so that's a why lot of people I say out there, that, you know, on the grind, that, you know, they they wish they could do that, you know. So oh yeah. Props to you, brother. Props to you. No, thank you, and thank, thank you for having us. It's always fun playing here. Like I remember playing with Rising Sun too. That one, uh, yeah, the last gig, that shit was fun as hell. And then um, I don't, we had our little dub event here. You know, yeah. it wasn't that many people, but it was still great to just listen to reggae music like that, like. Like we used to back in the days on vinyl, and we had a really special guest, Dub Robot, which he blew my mind that day on what he did live. And, you know, just keeping the music going. And another thing about, you know, us as Bombafire, you know, this record we've been working on is, is something that we, uh, throughout the years, you know, Colin and Venicia, they would write their own music. They had different players, and I'd just kind of be engineer and, and sometimes help produce. But this record, um, it's one record that every single person sitting here put their blood, sweat, and tears on. And that's what, what makes this record, I think, m it's unique and different than all the other Bumble Fire records. And, and uh, don't get me wrong, you know, like, what they wrote on their own and with other people and me helping was great. But this one has, like, this... I don't know this glue. It. This, yeah. it does. The songs every single song we hear, it's like, I, you know, even yeah. though they're not done, I was playing them the other day, just, just you know, trying to study the songs for the show and the set list before today was way longer we had way more new songs so, so when i was listening to the songs and again they're not done they're not mixed they're just we're tracking them as we go and i was just like blown away of how good they sound just there and the the way the lyrics are being written the you know the simple stuff like the way he, evan plays drums and stefano when he doesn't play the bass and that's what i feel is like <laughs> crucial to to a reggae bass players when to know when to not play yeah. Yeah. And Stefano has that shit down tight. And a lot of these songs don't have my keyboards yet, but it's the way it sounds there, it sounds awesome. So yeah. but I hope I hope you know you yeah. guys well, enjoy hey, man, the I record. Hope you guys get this record together, you guys come back, you yeah. gotta have your release party here. Yeah. You know, yeah. both yeah. both times you guys been here, it. man. It's a bunch of props, man. Hey, cool. you guys got a good thing going, you know, you represent the eight oh five and I appreciate yeah. you guys coming here and sharing sharing your talents. Thank you, really always. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much yeah. So, hey guys, uh, we're working. They got a Bombify, which is pretty easy to find online, or yeah, Bombify anywhere online, um, YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple yeah. Music, yeah, Instagram. You go to Miss Olson's event. Their their uh, show tonight is uh, broadcast live. You can watch that again. Watch oh, the podcast. And find them. Find them wherever they're, wherever they're playing. Listen to their music. They got it going on and bring that new record on. Yep. Wish you guys the best of luck, man. Thank, awesome. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mamba Fire. Peace. Peace. Do you know?